Hey guys, Luke Reed here with Kobe Stevens. So we're gonna, you know, kind of talk about the last couple days um, we've spent on the Polaris Boost here. We just had a new one show up today, so I'll kind of let Kobe start over and kind of tell you what his thoughts are on the new Boost. Yeah, so we got a, a 155 three inch uh, the other day. We've been able to put some miles on it. Uh, that sled is fun. It is super responsive. It just flat moves. The power delivery is the smoothest power delivery on a two-stroke application I've ever been on. Uh, yeah, it just rips. I mean, what do you think, Luke? Yeah, I mean, you know, Kobe said it there. Um, you know, one thing on the power delivery that I was really impressed with is, you know, you don't even realize how fast you're going, you know, until you look down or look at the trees next to you, you're about to run into something because you don't really feel the power that it has because it's so smooth and it's super, super impressive. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes it gets out from under you, especially in that 155 before you're ready for it. You know, you just accidentally give her a little too much and next thing you know the sled's riding you and you're not riding it anymore. Yeah. And um, even, even on the stock sled, I mean that sled will come right over backwards if you let it. It's effortless. Yep, so we just picked up a new 165 um, boost today. So um, we're going to have, you know, pretty compa good comparisons between the two. Um, we're also waiting for, me and Kobe will also be on um, the 155 275 instead of the three inch, you know, so we'll have some good comparison videos there. Um. to get after you know seeing what they can do with these things and you know we're gonna have three identical sleds 
work on have our own clutch kits and, yep. and we have our own clutch them. kits you know we're excited you know for the lightweight stuff you know we're gonna build one that's you know we're gonna pretty basically go stock mild and wild so we'll have a really good comparisons coming up on what they are we'll also have you know really good comparisons for you guys that are on the na side which is I mean, I've had just as much yeah. fun on an NA sled as I've ever had. I've, mm -hmm. had, I've had a ride on the NA sleds. Uh, we got some videos we'll show you guys. The, the NA sleds rip. Yep. Super fun. We're going to go over can reviews, um, belt, drives, belt drives, clutching single reviews, pipes. single pipes, yep, twin pipes. You know, we're pretty much going to put it all out there and, you know, keep one side stock and just, you know, continually just do one thing at a time. and. You don't really know what the difference that it makes and you know be able to bring it to you guys to show you you know really what one thing what you can buy for the money you know when when we get into this more you know we'll go kind of over the different features with the boost you know we'll do some tech stuff and some install videos for you guys so Kobe what do you think of that new you know 7s gauge that's on the new stone wheels I really like that gauge being able to keep track of everyone in your group you know that's on that sled is gonna be a plus because I ride with some people that you know i say i'm going to go from here to here and i'll go from here to here and they'll go from here to over here and i'll be able to find them on my screen and locate them and get them back on track so yeah i yeah. really like that feature especially what i'm excited for is you know when you're you know you're moving down the trail you know it's always good to stop you know every couple miles you know check on everybody make sure everybody you know catches up you know with that new 7s screen you know you can just look down and see where everybody's at you know make sure you know, you know nobody's having any issues or any problems and make sure everyone's still moving make sure everybody's still moving and you can you know get to the riding zone a lot faster so lots of cool features in that new gauge yeah there's lots of cool features uh, you got elevation you know your speed your rpm gauge are big easy to see uh it's just a great package yeah it's really great you know, and one thing too that we'll also be able to do is, you know, with these NA sleds, we have two of these identical NA sleds. You know, we're going to go from mild to wild on them as well. You know, from, you know, your cans, your belt drives, your lightweight stuff. We're going to do some Patrick's lightweight um, clutches on them, which we have found in the past. They make a really big difference. So it'll be fun to video that and show you guys, you know, kind of the difference of what everything makes. So you know what you're kind of buying before you buy it. It'll um, be nice that one of these sleds will always stay stock, so we'll have a base to kind of go off of. Yeah. So that we can show you guys and you guys can see the gains that we're seeing from these changes. You know, all the way up to, you know, we're going to end up with, you know, a silver turbos on the NA, you know, and we'll be able to give you a pretty good comparison, you know, versus, you know, the stock boost, you know, so you guys kind of can decide which way you want to go there. If you want to spend the extra money, you know, going, you know, just, you know, boost right out of the factory or maybe you weren't one of the lucky ones that really wanted the boost that didn't get one and you know you're still wanting to write a boosted application so that'll be pretty cool um you know one thing that we you know me and Kobe both really like to do and you know we're pretty good at doing is not really being brand biased I mean we all always like to give you know whoever's on what sled a hard time I mean it doesn't matter if it's a skidoo if it's a Polaris cat yamaha you know the new mountain max you know we kind of we definitely lean more towards the two-stroke side than the four-stroke side we don't have a whole lot of four-stroke experience but is experience with you know the other manufacturers the two-stroke manufacturers we have a lot of experience with you know i myself you know i rode skidoos for years and years i have you know probably easily thirty thousand miles on a skidoo and you know the awesome thing with this is I ride all of them. You know, here at Cycles and Sleds, we own, you know, every sled manufacturer, and I, I ride, you know, each of them almost once a week. Um, there is definitely sleds that fit my riding style better, which may not be, you know, what fits your riding style, which is, you know, some key things that we can go over, you know, in the future. Um, but really, all the sleds out there, you know, they're really good, you know, Polar Skidoo, Yamaha. Articat, you know, they all make a really good sled. It's all kind of about your riding style and really, I mean, what your buddies are riding. You know, if you want to ride something else to give them a hard time, I mean, that's pretty much it's friendly that, competition. Friendly that's competition. That that's the that's kind of the funnest part. You know, our riding group has 
is, you know, we have guys that, you know, ride everything, we ride everything, and if you're on one side and they're on, on another, you know, it's the funnest thing to do is, you know, give them a hard time about what they're riding. So, you know, we'll try to, you know, keep our reviews very unbiased. I mean, obviously we don't get any support from Skidoo players, anybody. Um, but, I mean, as far as our riding style kind of goes, I mean, the, the player sleds, so far pretty hard to beat. We're hoping Skidoo's going to come out with, you know, something or, you know, Cat's going to come out with something that, you know, maybe we'll top it. I mean, we like, like riding the technical terrain. I mean, the steeper and the more trees, the better it is. So, but yeah, we'll kind of go from there. We'll kind of do, you know, some sled lines up. We'll compare them with the, you know, factory turbo Skidoo. Yep. You know, the Arcat. Some, some videos of those up pretty yep. quick. Yep, with the new Articat, you know, stock to stock, NA to NA, you know, naturally aspirated, and then, you know, factory boost to factory boost, and kind of see how everything compares for you guys, and, you know, that way if you're, you know, thinking of purchasing, purchasing a new sled, you know, you may know what will be better. So, uh, Luke, when you rode the boost the other day, when you were going downhill, did you feel it breaking? Yeah, it breaking? you know, um, being on an Articat quite a bit, especially, you know, you guys know that 2018, 2019 Articat riders, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, it's really nice to kind of have that engine brake. You know, Polaris has, you know, stepped it up a little bit, went away from their belt deflection, you know, to new clutches, a new primary, new secondary, that you don't have to adjust any of your belt deflection, which is nice because that snowmobile keeps a hold of that belt the whole time and slows you down going down the hill, you know, without having just to lock your track up. and. Um, the new player's clutch, you know, we're breaking into it a little bit. We're um, developing some clutching for it right now. We're going to, you know, obviously always try to improve and bring the best product possible to the table for your guys' riding experience. Um, the NAs, um, they are still the same clutches as last year, but the boosts, they have different clutches on them. Um, so kind of stay tuned to our Cycles and Sleds Facebook page. We'll have more updates for you when that comes out. And as far as all of you Articat riders, um, they also have changed their clutches, which gets me excited because I hope there's going to be a new chassis change coming out with with that Articat chassis. But we are working, we're almost in the final stages of having some clutching put together for that Articat, especially the Silver Turbo Articat. We do a lot of stuff with Silver Turbos. Uh, we really like their product. But yeah, we're going to have some great clutching options available for the bulk of two new clutches out there. So, so Kobe, you know, you're gonna be riding the sled that's, you know, has some stuff done to it. I'll, you know, I'll probably be on the stock Polaris for a little <laughs> bit, you know, but when our boosts show up, you know, I'm, I might be on the boost that, you know, we're doing some work to, but as far as, as far as any sled, what are some things that you're kind of looking forward to or what, you know, what you're planning on doing to that NA that we can show these guys? You know, this NA sled, I've had, I've had a chance to put some miles on them, and it is a fun sled. Uh, I mean, probably the funnest sled I've rode in stock for them, bar none. Uh, you know, I'm excited. Uh, as you can see, we're going to put some Fox shocks on it. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with these shocks. They're a good shock, but I mean, for the best sled, you got to have the best shock, in my opinion. So we're going to go Fox on that. Uh, I'm really excited to try some single pipes out. Uh, you know, SSI makes a pipe, Bifo makes a pipe, so. It'll be interesting to see which one performs the best, and, and like you said, we'll have a stock sled to compare it with, so we'll know if it's gaining anything or losing anything. Uh, yeah, uh, TK belt drive, we're going we're gonna to play around with that, play around some gearing, see what we can do there. Yeah, we're just going to ride them and have a lot of fun and test products and show you guys what works and what we can, what we can make of these things. What I'm really excited about on the boost, you know, other than the shocks, I'm, I'm just a big shock guy. The Fox shocks, I mean, makes or breaks a ride for me. I mean, you throw a set of Fox shocks on something, it really, you know, completely changes the ride. You know, it changes, you know, the BR at the end of the day. You know, the kind of the biggest thing that sells me on the Fox shocks is in your rear track shock, you have an option to be able to lock that rear shock out. And when you lock that rear shock out, it really keeps your nose planted. So when we're in the tight technical trees, steep, um, steep trees, um, there's nothing like having that rear shock to lock out. You know, I mean, it's all fun to you know go and willy through the trees, you know, and just have a sled that's just a handful and a riot, you know, that wants to always be on its tail, you know. But when all 
your buddies behind you, your main goal is, is well, our main goal is, is you want to get everybody stuck behind you. You want to be the only one at the top, go back down, rub it in a little bit. So, yeah, that, I mean, just even the rears, I mean, if, I'm, they're a lot of money, but if, even if you can spend the money just on the rear shocks, that rear lockout is definitely something to throw on there. That kind of sets Fox apart for me. Um, you know, we definitely, definitely like the Fox for that reason. The other thing, you know, I've always been impressed with is, you know, these mountain slides come set up, you know, pretty over geared in my opinion. You know, when you're climbing a hill and you can only go, you know, ground speed, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour, you know, max track speed, you know, maybe 50, 60 miles an hour on the boost, you know, it doesn't really do anything for you to have a sled that's geared, you know, to go 100 miles an hour. So um, we've been running the TKI belt drive gear down system on it. Uh, it's relatively, you know, inexpensive. The belts are a lot cheaper, uh, even though you never have to replace the belt. I mean, like, I mean, Skidoo, Cat, and Polaris, we run them, we run the TKI system on all of them. And I mean, we have sides, you know, I mean, we sell our sides every year, you know, close to 2,000 miles, I'll never have to replace the belt. Install on those is and, super Yeah, install, you just gotta make sure, you know, you install it correct and make sure that you have proper belt tension after your first ride other than that, you set it and forget it. We've been, you know, kind of testing that 27 tooth top gear out instead of the 28 with this new QD2 system. Geared a little higher with the drivers and whatnot, so players kind of geared down back, back to what the old stock chassis was. So we're playing with that 27. We're kind of finding we like that 27 the best. I mean, we're getting, you know, a lot better low end throttle response and getting a little faster track speeds pulling up the hill. So far, you know, all we have right now is, you know, a force turbos can on the NA and that. In the belt drive. In the belt drive, the 27 tooth, and it's definitely noticeable. We'll have some more videos of that. Right now, we're just getting ready to pull the can off that. Our next can on the list is this silver turbos can. You know, with the, the can situation, I mean, you don't really gain a whole lot of horsepower. You know, you just save a lot of weight. We're going to do some weight comparisons, um, you know, sound comparisons, so you guys, you know, know what kind of can you want. You know, if you're wanting something that's super loud or if you want, you know, something with a more low, grunty tone. I'm excited for the cans on the new Boost. You know, it'd be nice to get rid of that big old suitcase, lose a little bit of weight in the front of that. But, you know, I'm super excited, you know, for, you know, I think throwing a TKI gear down on this and doing some lightweight Patrick's carbon clutching on it um, and then cycles and suds is clutching on top of that I think it'll be it, it, it'll, it'll be a, it'll be a hard sled to beat on the mountain other than that you know we're still you know we, we got a links coming and a skidoo coming we're still kind of waiting on those suds to show up they've been you know just like everything else you know all of our parts and stuff the shops everything's in the same boat everything really delayed um, but the good news is with skidoos uh, we have flashes for them and clutching. Yeah, we do. Ready to go. Yep, we do have, you know, the flashes all ready to go, um, which really, really wakes those skidoos up. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time r and that skidoo factory turbo clutching. You know, we have hundreds of hours in, you know, testing it, you know, on the mountain, you know, not on a dyno, you know, not just one sled. You know, we are always use a base sled to compare it to, so that way, you know, you know, you're actually getting a performance gain out of it instead of going backwards. So yeah, it's, it's looking to be pretty good. And it's snowing. And it's snowing. You know, we started out to what? Just a super slow winter? Super slow winter, but it's hitting hard now. It, so. It's hitting it's hitting us hard, so. It's looking promising. Yeah, I, me and Kobe, you know, we gotta go up Friday, Christmas Eve, and you know, the smiles on, on the new boost, and also the NA, and Kobe was able to go out Sunday, and yeah. I feel a little gypped for not going <laughs> Sunday because the difference from Friday snow to Sunday snow looked pretty good. So yep. we're gonna get out tomorrow though and hit it hard. Yeah, we're going. We're going tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go break in. You know, Colin's new Polaris <laughs> Boost. He ordered this one specially for him. It's a 165. We're gonna go. We're gonna go break it in and let you know how the 165 is compared to the 155. So. Then after that, we just gotta wait for our sons to show up. Yep.